I'd worked in the mainstream media for over 20 years. I'd worked for various stations, including KBC, uh, Royal Media Services, went to KTN, back to Royal Media Services, and I'd gained uh, quite uh, substantial experience as a producer, TV producer, as a TV journalist, uh, locally and internationally. I'd, um, I'd uh, stints at The Voice of America in Washington, D.C. I'd worked for BBC as a correspondent. I'd worked for CNN as a correspondent. So I had a wealth of experience, which uh, and then at some point I felt was not being utilized uh, properly in a, a newsroom scenario as an employee. I felt that I had so much in terms of content, I had so many ideas, I had so much to contribute to the industry, but it was not quite forthcoming within a, a, your typical newsroom setup. So my vision was to leave the newsroom, um, go out as an independent content producer and uh, be able to uh, practice and churn out the content that, that I thought was being ignored. And uh, I feel fulfilled because 10 years down the line, I think uh, there is so much that we've done that has changed the landscape. Uh, we have a popular program known as Daring Abroad that uh, focuses on Kenyans uh, living abroad and uh, those who've returned and uh, just looking at even the, their socioeconomic impact back home. And as you've seen, there's so much interest in the diaspora, so it's like I saw ahead. Uh, apart from that, we do uh, productions in terms of documentaries, features, commercials, and we work very, very closely with the mainstream media. We work very closely with the mainstream media um, in terms of media buying. What do I mean? That we get clients who come to us for production, and through us, those clients are able to buy at them. So, which means we are doing business with the very mainstream media. Uh, we do media liaison for uh, a number of companies which means uh, through us, uh, various entities are able to have their content in news and even some of the media, the mainstream media, use us to get content where they are unable to, to, to reach because of limited resources. So yes, I quit uh, employment 10 years ago, began Champs Media Limited, but I'm proud that I'm still able to do quite a lot with the same very media. So it's been a collaboration and I thank the media houses I worked for for the exposure, the opportunity they gave me to gain the experience which I'm now using independently. Leaving behind uh, a promising career that is, you've said uh, KTN, you've worked with NTV as well as Citizen, and you know, leaving that huge brand and the, of course you are living the dream at the moment. How did it feel getting to leave all that and starting this um, mainstream and uh, social media merged? Media. I was confident and uh, even for a, a full year when I was still grappling with where to take the content who, or who can um, embrace my model, it was not easy for one year almost doing nothing but I told myself I'll never go back to the newsroom. I was even called by certain stations to go be an editor but I said no that's not my vision. So to answer your question I was confident. I knew that it, it, it will peak with the time and with like any other business, because it was now a business, I mean, if you believe in a vision, it will work. And I was so passionate about it, nothing could have taken me off my plan. So I was confident. I believed in it. I saw it coming and I'm happy. I mean, 10 years on, many are coming to us, many are coming to me for advice. How do I do it? I want to go independent like you. And many institutions within the media sector are using our expertise, our experience to help train people, to help train journalists who want to do um, their stuff independently. So yes, I think I'm living my dream. I can say I'm proud and it feels really sweet, really great to be celebrating 10 years in that style. How was it starting? Uh, now that you've said, of course, you didn't uh, have an, uh, an office. Of course, you couldn't start from an office. You are grumbling, you're first here. How was it like, uh, you know, the beginning of building Champs Media? Yeah, I would tell many people, and uh, when, when we share our experience, when I share my experience, I tell people, don't think there is ever the best time, the best moment to start. Just, do you have your vision? Do you have the, the zeal? Do you have the, the passion? Passion can move mountains, Cynthia. Passion can move mountains. And there is a Nigerian saying, money follows vision. 
money follows vision. So I believed in it. So what do I mean? I didn't begin with uh, savings now because I'd worked in media now, uh, money. I can buy cameras, I can have an office. No, I began with no office, I had nothing, I had no savings because I came in at the wrong time. I'd uh, spent quite, uh, of course, me and my family on uh, my dad who passed on in 2011 on uh, grappling with the cancer for many years. So it drains all your resources. You don't have money. I came uh, with the loans like any other person who is employed. You know what I mean? There's nothing to hide. It's credit cards, I'm telling you the truth. So it's not that I had savings and it was smooth. No, it was, I would say, the wrong time. In fact, many people are like, are you mad, Alex? I mean, you are leaving a job with a salary, nothing. Nobody has pushed you out and you are just leaving a salary. I believed in it. I did not have an office. I did not have uh, savings. I did not have a camera. I only have had my brains, my networks, my phone and my laptop and I started working from my dining table at home, the family dining table. That's how I began. No employee, I was all alone, single and being supported by my spouse. The things that we understand or rather we see uh, in the media, spaces that get to sell the most are, you know, scandals, dramas, you're still uh, informing the people but you took a different turn. Why, why, why not entertainment and all these scandals? Why whatever you're doing right now as a daring abroad? Cynthia, first of all, I had had enough stress in the newsroom. Okay. Stress meaning the news, the typical news, as you said, is about uh, scandals, it's about uh, fights, it's about politics, it's negative. Yes. It's about, it's, so that's what you are involved in producing daily and putting on air. So eventually it affects you. From my personal experience, it, I, I wasn't happy when I go home and even watching what I've done is something that makes people clash. Politics, you know, you are pro so and so, so and so didn't so, or you didn't use this sound bite. Sometimes you are clashing with your colleagues, your editors, this should have been like this. So it, it, does, it does not always end happily that I go to bed happy. Then it's not content that I'll sit down with my family and my kids and my wife and enjoying as we have a meal. So I felt I need now to have to live happily. Live happily by doing what is what I would call a happy story. So we decided that we will focus on the happy story. We'll focus on the positive. And my conviction was the positive can also sell. It's just that media now believes in the negative that that's where we get ratings you know to, to 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 change into commercials but i believed i don't necessarily have to be news i can craft content that runs away from news and still get a following because i believed after all those neg that negativity don't you think there are people who want to go to bed happy and something inspiring? So it's that inspiration that I felt was missing and that that's what we've been doing. Give people inspiration and by extension, it's generating money. So who said that the positive doesn't sell? It sells that we've done business with all this mainstream media in Kenya, media buying, clients coming us with, to us with a positive story and giving them money. When we say media buying, it means a client come, like we did a series on the circles and we still do so much about circles. That's positive. How circles in Kenya have transformed lives in Kenya. And our sponsors have been coming to us, we produce, then pay the media air it. So media making money through the positive stories that were being ignored. So we've twisted things and said the positive can sell. And yes, that is one of the things that make us proud as we celebrate 10 years of Charms Media. A decade into, you know, raising a renowned company and what are the challenges, the setbacks that you've experienced bringing up uh, Charms Media Limited? I would pick it as the challenges we go through, I go through, not yeah. the challenges I experience. So it's normal. Just, let me just say, it, we run a business like any other and uh, businesses, uh, you know, affect, uh, get affected with the economic trends. If things are doing, if things are not okay in the economy, we also get affected. If you are getting 20 clans in 2023, maybe in 2024 you'll be getting four clans instead. And then there are things that happen that could be positive to a business or negative, depending, like COVID, uh, you know, affected so many businesses. For us, it was, I would say, an opportunity, it presented an opportunity for us to create 
content relevant, relevant to COVID management and raising awareness a bit about COVID. And uh, uh, it was one of our busiest period, surprisingly, while many companies were doing badly. So, but currently, I mean, you know what's happening around the world. So we are also affected like any other company. So we, we have challenges related to uh, uh, economy, cash flow, like any other company. It doesn't mean every company always sits pretty, even the big companies. So we go through that like any other company. Um, compliance, that every day we have to really keep with the trends and make sure we are compliant with the uh, Kenya Revenue Authority and uh, tax um, uh, issues. Not that we don't, we are not doing well, but what I'm saying is it's something you really have to be so keen on, otherwise it can bring a company down. It's, it's, I'm not saying that it's, it's a challenge that it's, we are unable to manage. I'm just saying it's something you wake up every day and you're like, are we compliant? Because if you are not compliant, you won't do business. That we get a compliance certificate every year and many companies will require that certificate. So you have to make sure your books are okay to maintain that, comp uh, that status. Another thing is production can be quite expensive. It's not as people think, people see us flying around. It's, we are not just enjoying and going for holiday. One, it's work, so we are working. We are spending, yes, we get uh, clients, you get partners sometimes who make it uh, happen, but still, you see, it's something you have to manage. If you don't manage well, you run out of business very soon because it's expensive to travel. There's a cost to equipment, there's a cost to labor, there's a cost to logistics, wherever you are going. So not many can afford to do that, you know, across the world. So it can be a challenge that you want to be everywhere, but then there are no resources. And you may find, yes, you have income coming in, but it's consumed in production. Production, as in, this area is not for the faint-hearted because you may you, you you may be disappointed. You think you want to make quick money. It's not about the money. For us, actually, it's also don't look at us on TV all over. It's not the, about the huge profits. We are passionate about what we do. We get fulfilled that we are rich in this sense that we are rich. We are transforming lives. Those are riches. We are connecting people. Those are riches. Um, we are bringing the world right into your living room. Those are riches. We are transforming policy. Government is watching what we are doing. Which are the riches? You know, so, and uh, we enjoy what we are doing. So that's what we really are made of, you know, okay. passion and so on. But yes, production can be quite expensive. Of course, with Gen Z, we'll now see, uh, you know, I'm writing a letter to my 22-year-old self, I'm writing a letter to my 20-year-old self. If you are to write a letter to your 10-year-old self, what would you tell him? One is uh, the world has changed. You have the world at your fingertips. You have technology that can make you move things. And like during our days where, when everything was about paper, paper, paper through paper, and you are walking around with your CV in a, a brown envelope. No, your CV is now online. Your CV is on, on LinkedIn. Your CV is on TikTok. Your CV is on X. Your CV is on Facebook. So that the younger generation should know that you can seize many moments using technology, using your gadget. So how are you using your gadget? So now the advice I'm giving is use your gadget positively. What are you searching? What are you watching? You know, because it's one, it can transform your mind, it can poison your mind, it can make you into somebody. There are people who are selling mandazi through TikTok. There are people who've gotten a job by you know, selling themselves on LinkedIn and someone notices. We've done stories where someone is in Azerbaijan, an employer noticed the talent or the ability through what you are posting. Again, even getting things like visas, what a, you know, a job, a job, a job uh, interviews, many will go back to your background. What are you posting? So take care what you are posting and use the internet positively for your own good. Of course, now the family part, you, you get to, with daring abroad, you get to travel a lot, you're always outside the country. Uh, as Alex, how do you get to balance family and business as well as traveling? How do I balance as Chamwada? One is, of course, and uh, my age where I've reached, my family is mature where I'm able to be away and still they feel my presence. What do I mean? My Firstborn is in university, third year, secondborn in university, first year, 
and the last born in a primary school about to go to the next level so they are mature we can chat on whatsapp as a family you know hold um, our chat uh, whatsapp meeting i mean is that not connecting with the family so from wherever i am in the world they are literally with me of course sometimes i get a moment to travel with them uh, so while i'm away they feel my presence then let me tell you about something about family it's just to be with them not just physically because you may be physically with your family but you are a nuisance or you are boring you are not providing are they okay in terms of food are they okay in terms of what they need then you have left a happy family and they're okay they are with you but you may be present but you are not uh, useful to them yeah. so i make them fulfilled i have a young family i remember when i just my first born i was going to still traveling i, I was still traveling so the issue is when you have your off duty two days how what are you doing with your family so spend quality time with them again you may be busy but in the morning you dropped your kids to school that's bonding so they feel great you dropped your wife at work then at some moment at lunch time call them find out what's happening so quality time in the evening you may go to home late but maybe you are doing an assignment with your kid that's quality time so yes we travel but we balance to make sure we give our families time and i've trained my staff those who have families to embrace the same make your family happy and they'll be okay even when you're away now maybe your parting shots uh what do you have to say as alex now turning 10 years in the independent media space my parting shot is to welcome our partners welcome uh, people to celebrate with us you may not be at the event when we hold it on 1st of december but i mean join us uh, social media send us a message i'm sure you can get to know about our uh, digital media pages that is facebook tiktok uh, instagram x so celebrate with us we are who we are because of you